Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The second crop of renewable energy preferred bidders was named this week. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss how the process is going. Terence, welcome to Second Take. With another 19 projects gaining preferred bidder status, where does a government-led renewables program currently stand? Well, the, as you say, 19 were named this week and that takes the figure up to 47 in total, given that there were 28 named in December last year. So at the moment there's 2,459 megawatts of capacity that still has to be built but has been named as, as preferred projects out of the total program for 3,725 megawatts that government is hoping to procure um, over the next few, well over this year and maybe into next year uh, and for delivery between 2014 for some of the projects like wind and solar um, and hydropower and uh, 2016 for the concentrated solar power plants. So we're fairly well into this program. There is still um, capacity available, and we're now looking at a, uh, that will come up in the third uh, bidding round. And uh, during this, this last phase, the 19, there was a total of 1,275 megawatts of renewable capacity. Nine solar PV projects with 417.1 megawatts, seven wind projects at 562 megawatts, two hydropower projects of 14.3 megawatts, and one 50 megawatt CSP plant. So um, again, solar photovoltaic and onshore wind projects dominating. But I think probably the most uh, interesting part of this bidding round was the, the fact that we saw very different prices coming in. Last time everyone just sort of met the caps that were in the bidding documentation. This time we saw price competition. And the average prices for solar PV came down from 2 rand 75 cents a kilowatt hour to 1 rand 65 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's quite a big difference. Wind uh, from 114 cents a kilowatt hour all the way down to 89 cents a kilowatt hour, which is coming into the realm of you know, uh, grid parity almost as our prices rise. And CSP uh, less dramatic for from 268 cents a kilowatt hour to 551 cents a kilowatt hour. So it seems that there's uh, been quite a lot of success in, in helping to drive down the prices. Plus we've got you know a, a portfolio of 19 projects that's going to attract almost 30 billion rands worth of direct investment into South Africa. On top of the 28 that have also been announced, that's about 70 billion rand of projects that could start getting to, uh, into the building phase quite soon in a program that's probably going to attract about 100 billion rands worth of uh, in, uh, investment over the next few years. The next bid window is expected to close in August. Is that still the case? Well, that is, in terms of the schedule of the request for proposals that went out last year, the, there was up to five bidding windows. The first two we've had and uh, uh, the, the last one closed on March the 5th and the next one is supposed to be during August. But it was made clear this week that um, government would like to take stock, even though there's, there's still over a thousand megawatts of capacity to be allocated. They'd like to take stop, stock after these two, two quite intensive bidding rounds to see if the process can be tweaked in any way and improved. So they're no longer committing to that August date. But we'll see, maybe the review will take place quicker than that and they'll be able to get moving by that August date. But at this stage, I think we're getting the signal that that might be delayed somewhat. But there will be in the interim a a small renewable uh, energy tender. Um, that will be for projects of less than five megawatts capacity. And those will probably f uh, feature some of the technologies. So wind and solar have really dominated the first two windows. Uh, the smaller ones will probably feature some of those other technologies, the biogases, the biomass projects, um, the, the small hydro. And th that documentation, they say, should come out within the next couple of weeks and uh, I think it will open up the space for the smaller scale investor. At the moment, as you can see from the numbers, very big ticket investment, multi-billion rands worth of investment required. Maybe the small tender will attract people that you know have more modest size. This week, ESCOM applauded the progress being made on the renewable energy front, and they called for the same progress to be made on the next baseload program. Can you tell us about this? Yes, uh, um, the chief executive, Brian Dom, spoke at African Utility Week this week and used the platform basically to say that we need some urgency 
around the next uh, base load decisions. Um, you know, we've got the Kusili, the Madupi power stations being built by Eskom, two co giant coal-fired power stations underway. And that takes us really to 2017. Then we've got these renewable projects that aren't necessary, but they aren't base load projects. Uh, and they will also be built over those that horizon I spoke of 2014 to 2017. But we've got plants in the Eskom system that are reaching sort of old age or maturing. We're going to start having to look at replacing some of that coal fleet. We also have made commitments at Copenhagen and at COP17 around our, um, our emissions uh, going forward. And, and the, to those things together mean that we're going to have to make some baseload decisions. Um, one, to meet the growth that's going to come beyond 2020 uh, in demand as well as to meet our commitments. And basically, Brian Darn says, you know, he applauds the progress made on the renewables front, and uh, he would like to see a similar, you know, urgency starting to happen around, are we going to make uh, decisions around new coal uh, or n the nuclear program? And he also said, you know, what is the role of gas? He questioned, what is going to be the role of gas as a possible game changer? And that is, I think, uh, where we're at at the moment, is that it is quite a difficult call for the minister because we've got uh, Eskom wanting to move ahead with nuclear, um, probably to, as a major participant within that. And uh, there has been a commitment to 9,600 megawatts in the plan up to 2030. But there's also been a request for information out to the private sector about what can be built before 2019. And some very interesting responses came back of over 60,000 megawatts. Now, if we discount most of those, it's probably not feasible, and even take 10,000 megawatts of that, you know, it's <laughs> still bigger than the nuclear program. Um, and uh, it probably adds a lot of, you know, decisions into the mix because is it better to have mega projects under the Eskom banner where there will be major state guarantees or is it big better to have a number of smaller generation projects, some being co-generation, some being other coal-fired, some being gas-fired, some being imported hydro or even local hydro. So I think there, that there is some thought going into this about how the, this RFI aligns to the integrated resource plan and uh, what is the best route to take. And I think that that is possibly causing the delay. But I think Brian Barnes is right to call for urgency and for some leadership because he doesn't want to be in the same position as his predecessors who were blamed for keeping silent when they could see that the electricity system was getting tighter and tighter and that culminated in that, uh, that horrific period in 2008 of load shedding. Terence, thank you very much. That is the Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.